So hopefully you've been following along on my channel. I've been uploading a lot of S3 tutorial videos to show you how to create buckets and upload buckets and configure them on Amazon. Another really useful feature is something called object replication. So that is on S3. You can set up a configuration to have one bucket basically clone all the new contents that are added to another bucket. Now off the bat, you might not really see the use case for this feature, but when you're working with larger projects or larger companies, usually you want to have some type of data redundancy set up. So for an example, let's say you have all your files or documents uploaded to US East one region. And for whatever reason, Amazon's US East one region goes down. So all your documents are no longer accessible. How do you make sure that your application still works? Well, you can do something like data redundancy or resiliency and have those files duplicated to a different region. I think it's called cross region replication. You can also do cross account replication. So this is another use case. Let's say you have a client who needs to process on files as you're creating them. What you could do is you could ask your client to set up an S3 bucket, and then you can basically set up permissions to allow your bucket on your Amazon account to replicate to their bucket. So they can just get those files automatically and do whatever processing they need on those files, maybe set up like an S3 trigger so they can process those files as they come in. So those are two really good use cases. Another good use case is a lot of Amazon services will create logs and they will put them in S3 buckets. So every service would probably create different logs for different buckets. What you can do is you can actually replicate many buckets to the same destination bucket, right? And that'll basically aggregate all the files from all these various buckets and put them in a single bucket where you can then do further processing or aggregation or whatever you want to do. And it just kind of makes things easier when everything has moved to a same bucket. A lot of these uh, use cases I haven't actually encountered other than the redundancy for cross region replication, but you can also set up rules to have that file that's replicated be moved into a different storage type, right? You could have like glacier storage. So Again, a step back, if you don't know on Amazon, there's different types of storage classes on S3. There's like just normal, there's Glacier. Uh, there's like other ones as well, which I have to Google because I don't really remember them off the top of my head. But basically they're gonna charge you a lesser amount depending on the storage class. Um, and those storage classes means that you don't really need to access that data all the time. Like Glacier means that you don't really need to access the data, but you need to keep it around in case you have like an audit in the future. So the main point of me telling you this is that you can set up replication to basically take all the contents of a source bucket and automatically move them to another bucket with a different storage class. All right, so now that we've talked about a couple of the use cases, I'm sure there's a lot of others out there that you can use for S3 replication. Let's just go ahead and dive into some configuration and set up a bucket with cross region replication. All right, so we're on the S3 dashboard. Let's just go ahead and create a bucket. Um, the main takeaway from this is that the bucket needs to have versioning enabled. So I'm gonna say um, my awesome bucket and I'm gonna put US to East one. All right, so the idea is we're gonna have this bucket do cross region replication to move all the items that are added from east to west right this is good if you need to set up some type of data redundancy in case east goes down but i'm going to go ahead and just say enable bucket versioning i believe you need that turned on for both buckets and i'm going to go ahead and create the bucket and also what i'm going to do is create another bucket i'm going to uh, add a suffix of west and i'm going to change the region to west one here so same idea we need to come down and we need to enable the versioning all right, so now we have an east bucket and a west bucket. And what we want to do is we want to set up cross region replication so that when someone adds a file to the east bucket, it's going to go ahead and move that automatically to the west bucket. So click on the management tab, and this is where you can find the replications rule panel. And I'm going to go ahead and create a replication rule. And I'm going to say replicate to west rule status enable, and I'm gonna go ahead and just choose a different bucket. So when you're doing the replication rules, you can do like prefixes to only do certain types of files that have certain keys on them. Um, we're gonna just leave this with the default, but the main part is that you need to set a destination bucket here. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in the bucket, I think it's called West, and that will basically replicate to the West bucket. Again, if you need to replicate to a different bucket in a different account, you'd probably select this checkbox, you type in the account ID, you type in the bucket name, 
but that person needs to also grant you permissions to do that. So just keep that in mind, but we're just gonna go ahead and do the West bucket here. I thought I already enabled bucket versioning, but I'm gonna go ahead and click that button just in case I forgot. But now what you can do is you need to set up an IAM rule, I believe, to allow this bucket to replicate to a different bucket. So I'm gonna create a new role and I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll down some. So here's where you can change the storage class if you wanted to replicate to a different storage class like Glacier or something, you can click on this and change the storage classes. Again, these have different pricings depending on what your use cases are, so just keep that in mind. But I'm gonna keep it standard for this tutorial. And you can also do some other things. I haven't actually read up on this stuff, but so this one's kind of important to understand. Replication isn't instant. I think they guarantee that within two hours, usually your items will be replicated. Usually it's shorter than that, but depending on how big your file is, it could take a while for that to be replicated over. So I think you can check this box and they kind of guarantee with the server service level agreement that your objects will be replicated within 15 minutes. But I guarantee you they probably charge you more money for this. But keep that in mind. So if you're trying to do like a, an active active redundancy system, it, this replication is not going to work the way you think it is. So it's probably good, more good for like a active passive replication or something. But just keep that in mind. Like your files take a little bit of time to show up in the destination bucket. They're not instantaneous. But with all those settings set up, I think what we can do now is click save. And that should hopefully set up the replication rules. And it also set up an IAM role for us. So let's just go ahead and look at this role really quick so we understand what we're looking at. If we look at this role, it already has some policies, I think, set up. So you can see here, if I scroll down, it's saying give this bucket, give the, the source bucket, the bucket that's in the east region, permission to get versions. And also I think it does like replication objects. So we're basically granting it permission to hit this west bucket. Um, with some various actions and stuff. You can kind of read through this if you want to understand more about this. So now I think what we can do is if you go back to the East bucket, let's just go ahead and upload a file. So I'll click upload here and I will just add a file. I'll go to my desktop, I should have something. All right, so I'm gonna grab this testing.txt file that's on my desktop and just go ahead and upload that. So now that the file is uploaded to the East bucket, what we can do is we can go over to the West bucket and verify that the object showed up. Over here, and we can click on the My Awesome Bucket West, and we'll see that no object has shown up yet. All right, so I had to click Refresh a couple of times, but now the file is actually in the West region as well. So another cool thing you can do is you can actually have everything from the West bucket replicate back to the East bucket. So you can kind of have them be like a circular dependency. So whenever you upload to either of these, it kind of pushes the files to the opposing destination bucket. I tried setting this up for um, an active active setup, but this didn't work too well because it takes so long for files to move over. All right, so there you have it. The file showed up over here in this bucket and it was actually pretty easy to get replication going. So if you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you're new to this channel and you wanna learn more about web development or DevOps engineering. And if you made it this far in the video, be sure to leave a comment below and say I watched the full video and also leave a comment explaining how you've used S3 bucket replication in your use cases at your company if you have, or if not, maybe some use cases that you think might be useful for using S3 bucket replication. All right, have a good day.